Hello and welcome to the second part of Madagascar expedition, this time with Ranomafana National Park. And of course we will see some very rare crayfish never filmed before, we will see water plants never filmed before, and of course a lot of other animals that I found or discovered on this trip, for me the first time in Madagascar. So Ranomafana National Park is in southeastern Madagascar, and it was established as Madagascar 4 National Park in 1991. And the park has a range of altitudes and that produces a variety of forest types, including lowland, rainforest and cloud forest. And in this forest we have a high level of biodiversity. The park has like 90 species of butterflies, 112 species of frogs, that's amazing, we will see some in this video, 22 species of lizards, a lot of insects, uh, like you see here, a very special moth, I think it's the biggest on the planet, uh, a lot of snakes, 22 species of snakes, here we have one that we found close to the big waterfall, a lot of bird species 118 and 30 of these bird species are endemic to the park and of course a lot of chameleons that we found. The chame chameleons are still abundant in big numbers because the people don't catch and eat them like with most of the other animals for example fish. They have been nearly totally gone. I have not seen any fish in the creeks and the rivers. I mean endemic ones. Uh, Mainly, if I have seen fish in Madagascar this time, it was like introduced ones. Chameleons are ever, everywhere, that's why I show some of them. Interesting insects, like I mentioned before. Here we have a mantis. So, yeah, let's get into it, but let's focus on the freshwater creatures. What I found in this creek, close to a village, have been Hydrotelfusa agilis. And in this genus we have four valid species at the moment. There have been five, but two have been removed and a new one has been added. So in, in this genus are four now. For example, Hydrotafusa goudoti was transferred to the monotypic genus Agora and uh, Hydrotafusa vencesi was transferred to a genus called Nihina. So we have 23 species of crabs that are endemic to Madagascar, assigned to 13 genera, with all genera and species endemic to Madagascar. In the same creek we also found crayfish from the genus Astacoides. These crayfish are only found in water surrounded by forest and therefore probably the most endangered species in Madagascar as deforestation is progressing rapidly and the animals are losing their habitat. The streams usually are clear, fast flowing and usually not very deep. These crayfish vary in color, sometimes they are greenish or blue-green, very often they are brown and from the size I would say they will grow to like 12 to 13 centimeters and in the last years the big ones are very rare because of course people go for the big ones and because it's close to the village the big ones are all gone you find smaller ones because they eat them and of course they are selling them which really upsets me but there is probably not much I can do about so we just have to accept it and here we see a mid-sized male I would say with like eight to nine centimeters not very big and what we also have found here, and this is, I think, one in a million, a white Astacoides granulimanus. I have never seen a white one before, never photographed. In fact, I think that these are the fir first videos about Astacoides in the natural habitat. So this find was very exceptional. I think I had found like three white crayfish or seen three white crayfish in the whole time that I do crayfish work. Also here, of course, I looked for plants and what I found is a plant from the genus Hydrostachis, a genus of about 22 species of flowering plants native to Madagascar and southern and central Africa. And they 
I guess they grow too big for the aquarium. I have not taken any samples because I had no permission. What I also have found and that irritated me a little bit was this plant underwater. First I was not sure what it is. Meanwhile I think it could be Petrostachis as well. Maybe the younger form, the juvenile form. But what do you think about this? Because I have not found anything in between. I found the big plants and these smaller ones, much, much smaller ones. And the water was really fast flowing here and I was always afraid to lose my camera. I've seen also some interesting mosses. I had no permission, so I didn't take any, but I think these could be very interesting for the aquarium. I think they are mosses. What do you think? And of course, close to the river, there have been a lot of animals that I filmed as well because I said I want to film everything around, not only the aquatic fauna and flora, I wanted to also film what is around the creek. And here we have a python, a tree python, and uh, no danger here because as far as they told me, there is no dangerous snakes on the island of Madagascar which made it very easy for me to walk the jungle. No poisonous snakes, no dangerous animals, of course crocodiles in the rivers. But other than that, they told me I can just walk freely and I did. So of course I filmed some insects too, just because it makes the picture of this habitat more complete. And then we went to the forest because the, my friend there told me that in these little creeks in the jungle there's also crayfish and of course I wanted to see them because I've seen the ones in the river but I thought maybe they are different from the color it is probably the same species in this uh, park we have two or three species three species of crayfish one is a little bit in a different habitat but here in the forest we have two so he shows me how to prepare a crayfish stick, trap, stick, whatever you want to call it. And therefore he collected some worms. That was the first thing to do before we start to catch crayfish. Because these crayfish are not easy to get because they are sitting in uh, some burrows and to dig them out that will take too much effort and too much time so my friend built here a crayfish trap with uh, worms on a stick very interesting technique i think in australia they do similar and they developed a similar technique to catch the crayfish and here i found another tiny crab of the genus hydrotelfusa maybe i have to take a closer look because looks a little bit different and this is how it's done you have a stick and then you roll up the poor worms i felt so sorry for them but this is the way they do it and after that we place the stick close to a burrow of a crayfish and here we can already see that there is some resistance the crayfish already grabbed the stick pull it a little bit back and then grab it that is much more Stop easy than digging them out. Whoa! And I was very excited, of course, because this was a really big female. And it was the first one that we catched with a stick in this place. So I was happy to have one. It's a little bit different color, not a big difference, but it's a female for sure. And my friend also caught some smaller ones. We released them because these animals, in my view, are endangered um, because of deforestation and also consumption of the people in the area. And in this little creek, the crayfish are not really underwater. They are like half in, half out. And this is the way they probably move them in the nights because probably during the day it's too dangerous to walk just outside in the creek because the birds can get them or any animal even if they have powerful keelys some birds or other animals can just grab them and we measure them first the carapax which is like 53.9 millimeters 
and then the pleon i would not call it abdomen i said that very clear because an abdomen spiders have an abdomen crayfish have a pleon and this is the right name for this part of the body it's like 61.9 millimeters a second species in the area is astacoides crosnieri and these guys have a little bit of a different habitat and we have been able to catch just a few of this species and mostly they are found in the passages around the banks of the wetland which are dug by the crayfish in the soft and loose soil as they are not only dependent on clear streams it is to be hoped that they can continue to maintain their distribution area but more and more wetlands are being converted into rice fields as in the picture here and the crayfish could disappear as a result and for the last species we had to drive to another place in my view the most exciting species that we want to find and of course on the road we had several stops where people offered freshwater fish and maybe you can see what it is i, I think there are some xiphophorus here I see also marbled crayfish, interesting. In this area, this could be also a, a danger for the native crayfish. And here we have Astacoides betsilionensis, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that we are going for. Only one adult, a big one, and the rest are sub-adult. And this is what really, really worries me because the crayfish cannot reproduce anymore. And my friend is a specialist on eels. We also got offered some live eels i don't know that species but he's a specialist on them and they catch them in these traps and as i told you before the local people they catch everything and that's why i have found nearly no native fish in the creeks and rivers in fact just introduced ones And this little guy was i guess he was like licking some of the salt that i had on my finger and the roads are a real disaster we had a little accident we hit this lady not me but the driver so we had to make a stop for several hours because she needed to be brought to a hospital and in that time i was able just to sit there and watch the locals and the last place that we went was a river still in the national park and we paid several people to bring us there because they, the day before we already informed them that they should put some traps, traps because the river was pretty high, a lot of water and very deep. So the access to the river was difficult and also it took like, I think we walked for more than an hour or maybe one and a half hours up and down the hills and it was really difficult to to walk in my view even if there was a small path up and down all the time slippery wet but it was a beautiful scenery and this is the river with astacoides betsileonensis and we really tried to first catch them with uh, worms on a stick this time we had bigger stick but that was not a success then came a guy that said okay we will look for the traps and this was much more successful. They really catch something. This is a bigger trap used for crayfish and for fish. And I can see already something orange. I was very excited because this crayfish is really, really beautiful. And special because of the morphology of this crayfish and you can see the orange at least 50 percent of these crayfish are orange here or maybe even more the whole population is orange i was told but i think we have some normal colored ones as well so it's time to get them out i was impatient but if they get you that really hurts so the guy was careful and look at this isn't that a beauty and they eat them what a pity they catch them and eat them look at this beauty bright orange 
with the spines on the side that's very typical for Astacoides betilionensis that's uh this animal was for sure like 18 19 centimeters powerful keelys and we also see, see the crabs from the genus Holtuisiana. Hydrotherfusa, in fact. Hydrotherfusa, not Holtuisiana. I'm wrong. And here we can see the crayfish underwater. This was a clear creek that ran into the river. So that's why I put the crayfish there. I filmed it in there. And from there, the crayfish could go back to his habitat within just two meters. And here he is in this river back home and off he went and because the locals told us that we have to go on a night trip we did i was not expecting to find crayfish or fish in the night i looked, checked the river but there was nothing but a lot of frogs close to the river a lot of tree frogs and like i mentioned before there's a lot of species in ranomafano national park so i said why not let's check them out I am not a specialist on frogs, I just wanted to film them to show you what one can find within an hour. And there's different species. And here we have the eggs of these tree frogs. I think they are cute. This is the right word for them, I guess. And also we have seen some chameleons because in the night you can easily spot them if you put a torch on them then you can see them from far because they are like glowing in the dark they are fluorescent i think that's the right word for it and of course a lot of other frogs we also found a snake another snake which also is not dangerous like all of the snakes they are not really poisonous and here we have something very rare i don't know if you can see it on the left side it's the mouse lemur absolute sensation smallest one of the whole lemur family and if you want to know about local fish the best is you go to a market in this case it was a little bit outside of Tana Antananarivo the capital and what I have seen for me these look all like introduced fish maybe you see it different but I have not seen any native fish while I was there and here we have the marble crayfish look how many they offered and these will take over Madagascar Madagascar was an interesting trip even if I was a little bit sad as well because of all the endangered animals here my next trip will go to Brazil to Santarém we will watch angelfish in the natural habitat together with Corim McElroy from Aquarium Co-op so stay tuned if you want you can subscribe you don't have to but you can and I see you in the next video